Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I am Peter, that is Connor, and we are going to talk about Lost in Space Season 2, Episode 6, it's called Severed. So full spoilers for the episode, as always. So this episode is mainly, as we're kind of expecting, dealing with the crisis of this uh, substance being on the on the Resolute. And, uh, you know, it went kind of one step further than that even, in that we, I mean, Penny and the others were trapped uh, in this, you know, one sort of section of the ship that was the infected section that was going to eventually have to be blown away from the rest of the ship because they, they, they couldn't stop it. So it was like we had to just cut, sever the arms, essentially. Yeah. Uh, um, makes sense. It. I think it was, it surprised us in the sense that uh, I think last episode we just assumed, you know, the, the resolute's pretty circular that, you know, okay, they could just keep going round and down somewhere else. Mm. Yeah. But, uh, uh, but uh, it gave us a fun survival thing for this episode, certainly. Um, yeah. Uh, it didn't really need to, I don't think, but it actually did give us a little flashback to show us how the how the the substance got on the on the ship. And I actually thought it was quite an inventive little uh, sort of not loophole, but like how it snuck on, but with it without them realizing that they'd brought something up. Yeah, I liked it too because obviously they quarantine everything. They're like, nope, no metal, absolutely nothing. Watches, metal rim glasses, mm-hmm. nothing at all. Um, but some guy has pins in his knees or had pins in his knees yes had pins in his knees uh it's one of those things even if you'd thought of that like could you have assumed that it would have infected that you know were they safe because they were underneath his flesh like you know it's a reasonable um assumption i think they'd have still quarantined him and checked to be safe oh yeah sure yeah yeah but it's something that you know didn't even think about so so it's it's a believable mistake as as well which is nice uh it didn't make me go oh this is bullshit they didn't think of this uh, and we found out Dom's already on the ship. Dom came up with this guy, uh, and Dom's up to his old smuggling ways, trying to sell his uh, his contraband, uh, which becomes actually very relevant in the episode. I thought this was a really neat way of reminding us what he was up to on the ship before everything happened last season. And yeah, I don't know. think it was necessary because we've had a couple of times this season with him talking with Smith about that past. But um, I mean, sure, why not? Yeah, I wasn't intrusive though. Like it was. It, no, it, no, it was fine. It also served the purpose of him not knowing what was going on until it was time for him to become involved. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, basically we had the situation where Penny, uh, VJ, uh, the teacher, and Smith are trapped in this little section of the ship, and they're in the classroom, and it's like they don't really know what's going on for a long time. Smith's, you know, theorizing and manipulating as she does. And ultimately, once they become aware, you know, Don finds out Penny's involved, and Don has this idea. He's talking to Penny, and he's like, and she, he's like, okay, what else is in the room? I need something to work with. And she's like describing everything that's in there. And I thought maybe they'd use some of the chemicals or whatever, you know, some of the, the biology stuff. <laughs> maybe something in there would be <laughs> like could make something. I don't know, like something to make the room airtight or something, or you know, whatever. But like. Uh, it was a lot more believable than that in the end. It was, yeah. It was just uh, one of the crates uh, that was uh, used for some of this material. Uh, it's just a standard crate that Don uses all the time. And he's like, oh, there it is. That's, uh, that's vacuum sealed. Uh, it even has temperature control. So you can survive in that for a, at least a few minutes whilst, you know, a ship picks you up. You up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but there's a nice little moment of sacrifice for him because when he goes to the captain, who I forgot was uh, what's her face from Mr. Robot. Uh, yeah, I did as well. And then I was like, I know you. And then it came back to me about 30 seconds later. Yeah, the lawyer. Uh, but she uh, isn't hearing it. She's like, no, nah, I'm not listening to you. We don't even know for sure. If, I mean, because th- those crates aren't necessarily designed for you know something to survive in space. And even though, but he, as he points out, they're not designed for that, but they actually function quite well as it. And he can't tell her how he knows. And eventually he has to just bite the bullet and say, okay, I know this works because I smuggle stuff in it. <laughs> Specifically, yeah. steaks, and they Keeps arrive nice and fresh. Yeah, they arrive nice and fresh when we get there. So, <laughs> so it works. So, as an element of sacrifice, where he has to kind of own up to you know the shady shit he was doing before to save Penny. So it makes him a bit more of a noble hero in the act. Yeah. Um, outside of the fact that he has, you know, he talks us through it, uh, and you know, he's like, because I, I love the part when he's giving the speech about because uh, eventually it's like, okay we can only th- fit three people in the crate uh, but then VJ finds like oh there's this whole bottom thing we could pull out but that bottom thing he's talking about is the temperature control uh, so if they pull that out there's no heating which is kind of an issue because space is bloody cold um, 
And I actually, I think the most impressive part of this episode for me was A, him describing what it was going to be like when they go into space and how terrifying that sounded, and then the actual way it was shot when they eventually did go into space. Uh, just all the close-ups okay. of them trying to breathe and they start shaking. It felt, it was a proper hot little horror sequence. Like, if, if anything was going to drive the rating of this up more than what they wanted, not that it really matters because it's on Netflix, but let's just say for a second it really mattered that they, they got a, you know, a PG, not a PG-13, but a PG. Like, I think this would have made it PG-13, like this little sequence. Mm, you might be right. It's just dark enough in terms of the threat level that I think... Because uh, we don't often think about what makes something a PG-13 because we're usually just dealing with PG-13 to our rating. Well, that's usually what we're talking about. Uh, but yeah. often when you see something that's lower than that, it'll say, you know, mild threat or it'll say, you know, sustained dangerous threat or something like that. Yeah, um, yeah, you're right. They're very specific, aren't they, with their terminology? They are, very specific. Uh, I'm, I'm sure they've got a chart somewhere how they categorize different types of thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I thought, I thought that was really impressive. Uh, but even before that, there's a nice little sequence where uh, the teacher, like, so Smith is manipulating the teacher into saying, oh, I'll sacrifice myself and stay back so, you know, you three can fit in the crate. And then Perry's like, no, 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 no. You're not reverse psychology in him. You're not doing this. And, mm -hmm. like, sort of pulls her up for it. Uh, but then it turns out he's claustrophobic and he doesn't want to get in the crate anyway. And, you know, they have to leave. It's like, time to go. They have to blow up this part of the ship. And Perry's like, no, Smith, do your thing. Convince him to get in the crate. You want to prove that you're Dr. Smith and go be Dr. Smith. Uh, and it's said this neat moment afterwards when uh, she's like, hey, I, I was useless, you know. Don thought of the plan, you thought of the killing thing, uh, you know, Smith saved the teacher's life. And VJ's like, well, no, but you you got Smith to do that. You, you convinced Smith to do something she, good. She, she's the real manipulator. <laughs> I don't know if manipulator is the right word, but it's in a good context, <laughs> but yeah, sure. A mastermind, puppeteer. Yeah, These all have negative connotations. <laughs> I don't think Mastermind does. Not necessarily. Okay. I mean, that one's... Okay, I'll give you less negative than the other ones, but they're, they're all the evil villain words. I mean, sure, but what what is the, the non-evil version? Uh... I don't know if it's a word for it, but you know, it's just someone who encourages people to do the right thing. Some, you know, an influencer. Like, you know... But all the words you use were all negative. I'm sure there's a word for it. I just can't think of it. <laughs> uh, but, you know, so that makes me feel a little bit better. Uh, uh, and, and Dawn gets arrested at the end. So, I mean, we're going to have to... She's probably going to go have to stick up for Dawn uh, next episode. Yeah, they make a point of saying that, you know, they'll take into consideration what he just yeah. did. Um, who knows if they actually will. And maybe, I mean, maybe even she'll go and say, hey, here's all the things he did on the planet as well last season. Here's all the things that he's done to help, you know, yeah. since whenever. Because uh, of the thing, like, what Dom was doing was illegal, but he was never an evil person. He was, you know, he was he was making a little money by smuggling some, you know, food <laughs> and stuff yeah, and booze. Yeah, when it actually went wrong, he did the right thing yeah. after the initial moment of running away. Yes, on multiple occasions. Uh, yes. So, and then he comes back in with chocolate for them as well. And it's a nice little uh, contrast to Smith, actually, where he has a true kind of redemption element to his story, where you actually believe he is a better person and that he is not this evil. Whereas Smith is like, I don't know, I don't know if she ever can. Like, it'll take the yeah. entire show if she ever does. Like, if, if Smith's going to have a real, proper, heroic, redemptive moment, it's going to be right at the very end of the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I kind of hope she doesn't. I'm, sure. I'm okay with just having a villain. Um, oh, sure, sure. But, I mean, if they do, it's it's going to have to take a while. She's done right evil, so... Uh, but all that stuff was really fun. Uh, really tense and, uh, like I say, got a little bit darker than I, I kind of expected it to. Uh, yeah. And, you know, it felt like a big deal when the crate finally opened and he had a blanket for her and he was holding Penny and saying, I've got you, I've got you. It felt, you know, genuine quite... Like, yeah, I mean, Penny's such this strong-willed character who always puts on a front of being, you know, snarky and... Like, I'm not scared of anything, but she, you know, when she was shivering in his arms, it was like, no, no, she is truly, like, vulnerable right now. Pretty understandably. Oh, yeah, I'm not critiquing it. Everyone should be vulnerable when they came out of that. Uh, the other three, they'll just have to sit there with their blankets. The pair was the only one who got a hug. Yeah. <laughs> She's the only one who got the body heat. <laughs> uh, ah, who cares about the rest of them? Yeah, so there's not a whole lot of uh, John and uh, Judy in this episode. And understandable, they got the lion's share of the there's time. Like one little scene of them talking yeah. to, to Will and Maureen. And if anything, the only complaint I really have is that it felt a bit weird that uh, Maureen had already heard about what happened with them off camera. 
I thought that was a, just a little touch strange. I kind of would have liked her reaction, and then maybe they had to convince her to continue. And this is fine. We're fine now. You know, keep going. Yeah. Either do that, or just don't have them in contact at all until yeah. later. Yeah. Uh, but it was just like, yeah, okay, you're fine now, right? You know, you got Judy there. Okay, fine. We'll keep going. <laughs> like it just, yeah. He did technically almost die. He was like on the on death's door. Like it's a kind of a big deal. But... She has a lot of trust in her daughter's doctoring skills. Yeah, apparently so. So. They're with uh, Adler, they're going through the desert. I like how the same beast that attacked Judy pop up again. I like that it was the same ones, it wasn't like... Yeah, it's the it's the local life form. Yeah. Uh, it, it's not just, oh, there's tons of stuff going. Yeah, and they've got horses, and, you know, uh, I guess it makes sense if they're trying to avoid metal infection. Mm. Uh, but they have, have the little perimeter fence up around his base camp, and uh, it keeps turning off. There's a nice little tense sequence here where the, the, the aliens are getting closer and closer. Every time it turns off, they're, they're almost getting there. Uh, and then we get the big moment of the robot showing up. And it's what's funny is I actually felt this was like, this was a bit easy and quick for the robot to show up. But credit where credit is due, because this was a red herring. And yes, it, it was easy and quick for a yeah, reason. Yeah, it was, it was this robot had set a trap. This was not our robot, this was SAR. This was uh, him looking like our robot until, of course, well in the cave later, notices the the scarring on the uh, the arm where it was where it was ripped off in the fight last season. Yeah. Uh, so neat little bit, and interesting that it didn't want to kill Will. It wanted Will here. Wants something from him. Yes. Was it just bait for the robot? Maybe, but I mean, maybe more than that. Yeah, I think it's more than that. That seems too easy. Especially given that this robot was also seeing what Will was seeing. You know, much like the, the regular robot. Yeah. Yeah. Because it definitely feels that this was... It was still Sar who was uh, doing these drawings. It wasn't... Yeah, the, the only other explanation is our robot did do the drawings and has gone missing since then and Sar is just use, using Will to lure him out again. Yeah. Well, he's not going far because we get him at the end of the episode. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, in, in context of what Sar thinks. Yeah, yeah, Because it's, it's when they're they're claiming at the end and Will falls through, uh, the, you know, the, 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 it's, it's like a cliff. It's like a, I guess it's into a cave. He falls into a cave. Yeah. Uh, um, but he gets caught by the robot. Uh, who actually, because that's the thing, Sar never spoke. He never said Will Robinson right like that. Uh, whereas the robot at the end does say, Will Robinson. Or... Yeah, I was I was wondering if, like, was he just trying not to give himself away or is his, his voice box broken? Oh, and it was Sar, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say maybe give himself away or maybe Sar just doesn't speak the way that, or maybe the way the robot speaks is based on his interactions with Will. Has uh, he learned English? Maybe that's the thing. Maybe he never learned English in the same way that our robot did. Yeah. I don't know how much our robot does. I mean, he speaks a few things, but not much. Well, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I mean, though. He's picked up phrases. Yeah. Uh, so now we get the big moment where they're looking at each other at the end. So uh, end of episode five is when we get the robot back with Will. I, I guess that's a fine, you know, because it, it could have been all seen. It could have been like, oh, we don't get the robot back until like episode nine. It could have been episode two. Uh but it said they went right back in the middle, which is probably right, because I think the pacing this season has been really solid so far. Uh, and no episode, yeah. I think, has suffered from having a lack of its own main exciting plot. You know, between this episode with the, you know, with the penny and the, the box and all that stuff, uh, and the disaster on the ship, and then last episode we had the, you know, John's dying, you know, time limit. Episode before that was, you know, the, the aliens-esque yeah. episode on the ship where no one was around. Like, while I agree with Everything you've just said. Yes. Wasn't this episode six? Yes, this was episode six. Okay, fine. Just after halfway. Just after yeah. halfway, all right? <laughs> Pacing's still great. Uh, all the episodes have been yes, really yes. solid. Like, I don't, don't dispute any my, of the... My, my number being one-off does not change the general statement I was making. Uh, <laughs> so, yes. Uh, but no, really, really solid. Um, so, no, I'm excited. Uh, you know, I think Don got good character growth here, um, as did Penny. Um... I'm really intrigued to see like his trial. I think it'll be sure. a really nice change of pace um, for, from all the sheer survival stuff that we do on this show a lot. Yeah, it's almost a shame though if they do it without the rest of the family being there, because uh, like you know, I almost want to have them all stick up for him in different ways. We might get him back. We might leave that plot next episode and come back to yeah, it maybe after. yeah, maybe just be in a holding cell. You know, Penny will come visit him for a scene, and that'll be it. Yeah, uh, for next episode. Yeah, that's that's possible. Um, I really like, Will has a little speech at one point, because Adler says to uh, him and Maureen, like, you know, do you regret 
you know, leaving Earth, you know, given everything that's happened, would would you have stayed? Um, and Will's like, no, of course we should have left because we're all better now. And Maureen just thinks that he means, oh, you mean me and your dad? You know, the way we're we're kind of in a, a happier place marriage wise. Is like, no, everyone like you know, Penny's like really found herself. Judy's like you know done a lot of good stuff, and uh, even Don. And I love how he throws that in, like even Don, <laughs> like yeah, he's, even that dickhead. And he's he's not a part of the family, but even him, yeah, he's he's better. The robot's better. Imagine if the ro- if we'd never found the robot first. Like, what would he have done without my influence? Like, and I was like, yeah. a lot of goods come from us doing this, even though it's been you know treacherous and. <laughs> dangerous and you know they're all still alive that's true that's true and given, and given that it's a family sort of focused show i suspect that all the main characters will stay alive for, for the duration but yeah like the, in in other shows there are episodes where eventually they're going to kill someone and we're not and we're, we're not going to know which one it's going to be right because mm-hmm. they're always in danger that is repeatedly and eventually it's going to happen um i don't think it will in this show I don't think so. That's I mean, okay. if it if it was, it would definitely be one of the parents. You know, it, it would be one of the parents or Don. Yeah, it'd be one of the adults. Even though, I mean, Judy's already an adult, really, and Penny's not that far off now. But still, no, but I get what you mean. Yeah, um, and, yeah. and maybe it would, but I, I just don't see it. Like, I can see like Victor dying. <laughs> you know, Who gives a shit about Victor. I, Adler could go out at the end of the season. I could see that. You know, like yeah sure like all the side people but they're just out of the core family yeah you know, oh. I, I don't see it happening anytime soon yeah i don't see it either and uh but actually adler actually kills sar sar is dead uh his big electrical doohickey just basically makes him implode it's actually kind of badass yeah uh so Save, saves their lives because again it is interesting when, when it's it's threatening uh maureen but whenever will gets in the way yeah that, that was the does thing not want to hurt him maureen like grabs will and puts him behind her you know being the the, the you know the the, the heroic parent and immediately sar just starts gearing up his gun to fire at her and then will's like no no, no you get behind me <laughs> 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 so will had to go in front that was the key yeah. to the scene that was good uh but yeah that's episode six uh so yeah let us know what you think of this one in the comments below like and subscribe all that stuff get us on the twitters at mailed underscore fuzz for channel updates if you want to support the show and the channel and everything we do here head over to patreon.com slash mail tv and you can support us for as little as one dollar per month and get some bonuses for your troubles uh, otherwise that is us uh, check out other content we have coming out other tv reviews of course uh, hbo's the outsider just started uh, we're reviewing that we've got other stuff coming up soon uh, next netflix show after lost in space i think is lock and key uh which is actually a very similar title when i say them back to back like that uh but uh yeah so that's us so thank you once again for watching or listening we always appreciate it keep watching tv guys have you got any vanilla <laughs>